everybody, welcome back to the Fenner Aquarium, and uh, kind of excited to announce our, I've been talking about it in the last couple of videos, we started a uh, saltwater coral and fish store, uh, Northwoods Coral and Fish Farm, and uh, yeah, just got to order coral in today, figured to talk about them a little bit, kind of show you guys what we got, we got a, uh, you can see a little sunburst butterfly fish along those hawkfish right there, kind of peeking in on the frame. And yeah, um, I'm pretty busy with this. Probably gonna do a lot of videos of saltwater stuff because as much flower horn stuff as I do, I really, really like saltwater. Uh, and I would say, if you count my personal tanks, not my store tanks, I've got three saltwater tanks and wait, flower horn tanks three flower horn tanks so I guess they are evened out. I know obviously I got a lot of other stuff and if you count the store tanks I've got got a handful more but uh, yeah why don't we get at it. In this hospital tank here you can kind of see a project of mine. Uh, he is a unicorn tank like a little over 10 inches long and when he came in from my uh, wholesaler which is diver down in Hawaii um, his bag had gotten popped by Delta Airlines. They must have dropped the box and split the whole box open, the styrofoam and everything inside of it. And of course, the one bag pops has the biggest fish in it. And uh, he's a little skittish. And uh, he was actually dried out. I had to, when I drove home from the airport, I had to hold the bag up so that he was, you know, he could keep his gills underwater and his fins were all drying out and everything. And so over the last couple weeks, I've been medicating him and getting him back to where he needed to be. And uh, he's do—I mean, he eats good. As he's growing back in. We've just been trying to heal him all up, and he doesn't help that he's a fish with more skin than scales, so they're a little bit more sensitive. Um, but he'll come around. He's still a beautiful fish. He'll be up for sale. I don't—I don't list any fish until they're done with quarantine. The big thing to me is I wanted clean fish so they have bare bottom tanks for quarantine just some rocks you know for good bacteria filtration wave makers heaters and that way I can medicate them in here and there's nothing that can harbor uh, parasites or any anything bad in the water because there's no sand bed for it to hide in that way I can clean the tank out real easy and um, you know if, like a lot of stores they run you know fish with their corals and everything like that and when they do that, they're not treating the fish when they come in. So when they come in stressed from shipment or if they were sick prior to the wholesaler sending them to the stores, they don't fix that. And then you have to quarantine them. And I guess our whole thing here is selling you fish that are already quarantined. Because I know how it was when I had a, when I was buying from stores. It, it, was, it sucked having to quarantine fish or risk putting them in your display tank when you get a more fragile fish that you do not want to... Um, to stress out in a quarantine tank. So here's a guy with a whole lot of attitude. Long nosed hawkfish, he's not afraid of anything. Eats pellets. Anything I throw in there, he'll eat it. And he is not afraid to get right up in front of the camera and right up in your face. The butterfly's a little more bashful. Good eater, very small. I mean, you're talking maybe two inch fish. Let's see if he can come out. That's a sunburst butterfly, it's beautiful fish. Both these guys are out of quarantine. I'll get them on the website for sale. So let's talk about corals. Corals are really, really interesting to me because you can have a lot of them. You don't really have to worry about how many you have in your tank. If there's space there, you can put coral in there. You know, as long as you have a reef ready tank, as far as water quality and filtration and all that. You can see my black tank sneaking up in the background. He's my ultimate frag cl cleaner. He can get that long nose, gets him right down between everything, and he likes to slide right under the frag rack. Let's see, ninja fish. So I got you on an orange filter right now because if I don't have you filtered, that's what you see. The blue light just kills my camera. So that's what you get. Got some really cool acropora in here. Blue staghorn. This is a boomberry. Acropora, it's a signature from Boom Corals. Uh, orange tip staghorn, or orange tip staghorn, green highlighter staghorn. That thing is bright. 
Tub Stellata Manipora, Superman Manipora, Pavona Mani or not Pavona, Silver or Pink Sand Dollar Manipora, Pink Bird's Nest. I think this one's a Rose Bird's Nest. I'd have to look again. The famous Forest Fire Digitata, that nice green skin with orange polyps on it. I just like watching them move. This war paint hammer coral, I have had this for over a month and I cannot believe that nobody wants, has, oh I'm not saying nobody's wanted to buy it, but I'm surprised nobody's jumped on it. And then I got on this uh, Boom Coral Signature Green Machine Cyphastria and it is, I, I can't believe how huge that frag is. The disc next to it with the zoas on it is an inch and a half disc, so this is like a, you know, two inch across and almost an inch tall frag. I, it's not even really a frag. That's that's almost a small colony. Got disco eye catching corals, disco blue mushroom. That blue is just losing it in this. No, that doesn't work either. Got some King Midas zoas. Sunny D pallies. We got some red and black zoas. We got all sorts of acans, leptastria. I've been calling this one the bubblegum chalice. It's kind of a pink and orange. This is a cool micromuse uh, lord coral or acan. Got a eye catching corals clementine leptoceris. And then next to it, they almost look the same color under this light. Ready? You can kind of see that it's a little bit more yellow. It's a 24 karat gold. Leptoceras, some green acans. These things are always trying to feed tentacles out all the time. And it goes on. We got a lot of uh, Pasilopora, Seriatopora. We got some good greens. It seems like it's, I mean, this hobby's kind of dominated by greens as much as we try to get everything else. That's why it's really pops when you see something like this forest fire. This tub stellata, it's a purple skin with white around the growth edges and then it has green polyps, so it really, really shows off good. Then I've got a couple of grow outs back here. That in the center is a uh, kind of a pinkish orange, Monipora capricornus, and then these sticks here, if I can get it to focus, those are a Monipora hisuda, which is an elkhorn Monipora, not like the elkhorn acropora but uh, they do grow in a stick shape. They're supposed to be really good growers. They're kind of a uh, army green color. And then there's some zoas growing behind it. The ever popular Z pulsing xenia. You can see them pulsing. I don't... Hard to focus with all that light. We got a reef raft. Aussie gold. That is a limitless Acropora, and this is a Aura Hawkins Echinata Acropora, and then there's a Aura Red Planet there. Two Miyagi Torts. This is a one of our signature ones. This is the Blue Bruiser Staghorn Reef Mob Blue Bruiser. So everything you see out of us that's going to be a signature and our food and coral brand is going to be Reef Mob. And uh, you know, eventually we're going to be getting into hats, shirts, Reef Mob stuff. You know, you'd want to wear it. A lot of reef mob signature corals. But the big thing's gonna be definitely our food. We're gonna have a fish food and a coral food, and I will have them available in two days from now. So today is the 15th of May. I will have them on the 17th, and then I will be getting more. We'll be selling them in 100 gram bags of powdered coral food, and then uh, in. Uh, half pound bags of one millimeter sinking pellets for fish and your LPS can eat them too. I don't know how many other people feed pellets to their LPS but I like to do it and it seems like they like it. So yeah, let's switch some white lights on here. So there's a good and a bad to white lighting on your on your coral tank. Good is, you know, it's a little bit more natural for your fish, you can see your fish better. And you can see some corals you see better in the white light, but it seems like the majority of them are really saturated with blue light. You'll see that on every coral place because um, it really makes the color pop. 
And uh, oh, if you're if you're wondering, that black tang, he's the don of the reef mob. He's on our packaging for both. He's kind of like the mob boss. So, he, I mean, he he runs the coral tank. We're gonna get a bigger coral tank set up so he can really have some space to rule. And uh, he is for sale. Uh, I got him listed at 700, which is cheaper than you're gonna find a black tang. He's got to be close to seven inches. You're gonna you can find a black tang that. Under $700, you need to buy it because I know most websites are selling them for a thousand to twelve hundred dollars. So I thought I'd price him competitively, but he's still not too cheap, and I wouldn't mind keeping him around. Um, so yeah, let's let's look at some of these with the white light on. You can see a little bit more colors on a few of them. As much as some of the greens and everything pop with the uh, blue lighting on, you cannot argue with some of these acropora under white light. I mean, even even these LPS over here, they still got great color with white light right on them. Some of these, you, you lose their color, like these purples. You don't see that under a blue light so much. I actually really like this rose gold or rose bird's nest. It's pretty nice. It's got like a yellowy green skin with a nice pink polyp on it, or a pink bird's nest there. Your forest fire still looking bright. Some greens back there. And this this pink silver dollar Monte Pora's glass is throwing us off. It's pretty interesting actually. It's got like large pink circles around all the mouths. But it's actually in the skin. Let's see if we zoom in on this tubs if we can see a little bit more of that purple. That's kind of drowned out under this light. I'm really liking this this boomberry acropora. It's got a like a blue green skin with like these purple polyps on it. It's pretty cool. There's our blue bruiser stag. Growing nice. These two Miyagi's, these are from different. This is from a Reef Club member, and this one is uh, from my uh, Coral Wholesaler, which is an actual aquaculture place here in Wisconsin. I kind of like the idea of getting some corals that were grown in the Midwest. Figure that's like they don't have to travel as far. Hawkins Echinata, Green Anacropora. This one makes me nervous. Green Goblin Anacropora. It's a little bit different. So thanks for listening to me babble. Here it is. The start of uh, Northwoods Coral and Fish Farm. I'm working on trying to find a big tank set up to do a big grow out and frag tank and then something for my uh, fish to go in after they finish quarantine so they're a little bit more comfortable and feeling like they're in a natural uh, habitat so yeah check out our website it's uh, northwoodscff.weebly.com um, once we start making some more sales and everything's looking up then we'll get a dedicated uh, just northwoodscoralandfish.com or something like that. And um, the fish food will be here in two days, and the coral food will be here in two days. We'll have some pre-sale ones. Uh, labels are still in the making. They're designed. They're just at a printer, and I didn't want to wait to have everything available for sale. So, yeah. Look out for that video. I'm going to do some fish feeding videos, coral feeding videos, show you that this stuff's got the best ingredients. It's made in America. And... It's our own formula, it's made just for us, it's not the same as any others, and we will be, I'll do some fish feeding videos, I'll show you some fish eating the pellets that are not regularly pellet trained fish. So I'll do that, and then I'll do a coral feeding and a reaction video, maybe I'll do one. I've got some uh, reef chili here that I've been using temporarily until our food comes in, and I'll probably continue to use it, it's good to have a variety, but I will... Uh, do a video with both, kind of comparing the two, and then maybe compare it to Reefroids, and uh, I used to use Benepets, uh, Benareef, Coral Food, we, so we'll do something like that. So thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe, uh, like the video, comment if you got any questions, uh, you can check us out on Facebook, it's Northwoods Coral and Fish Farm LLC, or I think it's facebook.com slash Northwoods Coral and Fish. 
Um, so yeah, look out for us. Here we come. And uh, I might change the station name to Reef Mob or Northwoods Coral and Fish. You guys decide if it, maybe I need to leave it to Fender Aquarium. I got like a hundred and well, no, I think I got like 70 subscribers, so it's nothing. I think most of you would be okay with the change. And, uh, yeah, see you later.